It is Will with you for Friday's Off the Ball. We'll be looking forward to that Nations League clash tomorrow between Scotland and the Republic of Ireland. Darren O'Dea will be with us in the next hour. He was talking to Nathan Murphy a little bit earlier on today. We'll be talking to Ashton O'Reilly from the golf, that remarkable finish uh, by Moa Falk, where she's gone around 10 under par today to take a two shot lead into the weekend at 12 under par. We'll be going over to Dromolin Castle uh, to talk to Ashton a little bit later on this hour, and we'll have the best of the weekend in our final hour between 9 and 10. Delighted to say, though, Nathan Murphy joins us from Glasgow. Nathan, how are you getting on? Hey, well, how's it going? Yeah, look, this is the penultimate round of fixtures now in the Nations League. The Republic of Ireland still have a lot to play for. They could still finish in second place with positive results against Scotland and against Armenia on Tuesday night as well. Uh, but Scotland have put themselves in a very good position now, despite the difficult fixtures they had to finish. To have to go Ukraine at home, Republic of Ireland at home, and then to play Ukraine on neutral soil next week if they're to finish top of this Nations League group. But the hosts have uh, come into this game with a bit of form behind them for midweek. <laughs> Yeah, they certainly have. That 3-0 victory against Ukraine has been raved about here in Scotland as one of their best performances of recent times. And I can understand why the intensity that they played with, it was a very, should we say, modern football performance. It was a real high press. They didn't give Ukraine a second on the ball. And 3-0 was probably as, it, it was as good as it got for Ukraine. It could easily have been five or six. Scotland created so, so many opportunities. But... The last time Ireland and Scotland met, it was 3-0 to the Republic of Ireland. And, and that's that's what makes the Nations League great, Will, is the fact that actually you have teams who are very similar in ability, and this is what should happen. They should all beat each other at different times. And it does mean that in terms of topping the group and all those different permutations that uh, we know or we uh, get confused by, it does go down to the last couple of games. There is still a very outside possibility that the Republic of Ireland could top the group. For that to happen, they would need uh, both Ukraine and Scotland to fail to win any of the remaining games. So Armenia do something against Ukraine tomorrow, and then there's a draw between Scotland and Ukraine and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think for Ireland, it's more about getting the highest possible ranking they can, ensuring that they have a playoff uh, come what may from the Euro 2024 qualifiers. Uh, but Scotland, certainly it feels in a in a very different mindset from when they came to Dublin. I know they had beaten Armenia just before they came to Dublin in June, but it was a week after the World Cup playoff against Ukraine and the absolute heartbreak of that from Scotland. Uh, they were they were definitely struggling with that. So I think Stephen Kenny, uh, who was in for his press conference at Hampden Park uh, just a couple of hours ago, I, I think he realises that the game was not that relevant to what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, that's been played down everywhere, Nathan, but Ireland played really well in that game in June. Like, we can't forget that either because we were kind of in the middle of the referendum, the latest one that we had on Stephen Kenny, particularly after the game away from home against Armenia. And a lot of people felt down going into that Scotland game and thought this could really turn sour if the last two games of that international window had been negative results. And yet Ireland left their best performances for the game against Scotland and then the game in neutral territory against Ukraine. It was such a mixed window back in the summer. It was, and it's been mixed generally over the last couple of years. The one thing is that Ireland have tended to perform better against the better teams. In a way, it's why I feel that Tuesday is almost more important against Armenia. Ireland at home need to start finding a way to break down those sides that we would say have lesser ability, that will sit back. Ireland have a lot of the ball. They need to start winning those games. They've struggled at home against Luxembourg, struggled at home against Azerbaijan and obviously beaten away against Armenia last time. So I think that's hugely important that in home soil, Stephen Kenny said today there's 44,000 tickets sold on a Tuesday night in September, which he feels shows that the public is really behind this team. And I think he's right. I think the more people you talk to, people feel they are certainly heading in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, things can change quickly. And that performance against Scotland was very impressive. After, after a couple of little hiccups at the start, and if we're getting into potential team selections, like Shane Duffy made a couple of bad mistakes at the start of that game. Like John McGinn, uh, in the form that John McGinn was in on Wednesday night, would have taken one of those chances. Remember, basically cleared through and goal against Cleveland Keller twice. I didn't take either opportunity. And you're right. Like the quality of the Irish goals is what we remember from that game. In years to come, we'd still be talking about that performance against Scotland because of Michael Obafemi and Troy Par Parrott's link-up play. Uh, Obafemi's pass for Parrott's header. And then Michael Obafemi with an absolute rocket. So... I, I, I think it's definitely relevant from an Irish point of view in that they have built so much confidence from that performance. It's more what sort of Scotland turn up. But if Scotland are, listen, 
both sides again are very similar there is an inconsistency there uh, the general headline around the papers today is like it looked very good for Scotland but this is Scotland and we know what happens they can win 3-0 and then they can put in a very flat performance but they've never lost the home game in the Nations League uh, so that's another thing for Ireland at what's going to be a packed Hamden Park over 50,000 Saturday night in Glasgow uh, well you know what's going to be like the debate seems to be across the water, not too dissimilar to what we're having right now about the way the Republic of Ireland were switching their defence around early under Stephen Kenny. Clark seems to change. Going into the Euros last year, he'd very much found a way to get Robertson and Tierney into the same team by playing three centre-backs and having Robertson as a wing-back and Tierney is the left side of the centre-backs. But now with that injury to Andy Robertson, they went back to a back four against Ukraine. And pretty much all of the Scottish commentary on Thursday and Friday was this suits the team a lot better. Yeah, uh, it's been a long issue for Steve Clark. how you get the best out of both Kieran Tierney and Andy Robertson. And if you talk to the Scottish supporters or the Scottish journalists who cover the site, they would all say that Kieran Tierney has been the better player in a Scottish jersey. But I don't think anybody could say at club level uh, that he is ahead of Andy Robertson, who's arguably you know in the top two or three left-backs in the world right now. But for Scotland, Kieran Tierney is very much a key man. And the fact that Andy Robertson was missing meant that there was a big change in system for Steve Clark. Uh, Stephen Kenny was asked about it a little bit earlier on, and you know he wasn't quite sure. I think he thought it would be three at the back, but then going with four at the back on Wednesday night means he'll have to see. I suspect they will stick with the four at the back. Uh, Tierney is in all likelihood going to start. Seems to be the vibes coming out of the Scottish camp. I know Tom English was on AM this morning saying there was maybe some speculation he might be rested for that game against Ukraine, but what we're hearing is he will start. Uh, Nathan Patterson is out. So, you know, the guy who's keeping Seamus Coleman out of the Everton team, Aaron Hickey, who's playing with Brentford, another very young player, he'll slot in at right back. So I think it'll be four at the back. And you're right, the conversation is very similar. These are two sides, would say, are very inconsistent. And maybe that is always the way. Expectations should be higher for Scotland. You look at the quality of player, the level their players are playing at right now, compared to Ireland, that they do have a Kieran Tierney of Arsenal. Scott McTominay back in midfield playing very well for Manchester United, was outstanding during the week. John McGinn, who I know Villa fans haven't been impressed with this season, like ran ran the show against Ukraine the last night. And Shea Adams, uh, you know, is a, is, a, is a very good striker who knows his role in that team. It looks as though he'll start again tomorrow night. Linda Dykes, despite coming on and getting a couple of goals, will have to make do uh, with the substitute. I think this is a very, very difficult game to predict based on both these sides have been brilliant recently, but both of them have also been poor at times recently. Yeah, Sean McGinn's 50 cap. He's going to be captain with Robertson out as well. Football here on Off the Ball is brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky, BT Sport and Premier Sports as well. Now, Stephen Kenny was speaking a little bit earlier. Nathan was among the journalists at the press conference at Hamden. And this is what Stephen Kenny had to say about going to the Scottish Cup final with Dunfermline back in 2007. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's obviously a long time ago. Um, you know, it was... Uh, so, you know, tremendous, tremendous support from Dunfermline support at that time. I remember, you know, nearly eighteen thousand people coming up, up, up around the stadium there from Dunfermline. It was tremendous passion about the game itself and and the run, of course, playing Rangers Hearts and Hibs. Um, Craig Gordon actually was in goal for Hearts that time, and that was. But it shows you how long ago it was. I, I had four children under seven then at the final um, at the time where the youngest was only one and then they're coming tomorrow they haven't been in Hamden since they're coming tomorrow and of course the youngest is now 16 so and the, and the rest of them are are uh, finished school and, and, and you know in the, in the real world so it's um, it's that, that gives an indication uh, how long ago that was how quickly the years go by, Nathan. It feels not too long ago that uh, this Scottish adventure was playing out in front of Stephen Kenny. And then when he mentions his kids, it really brings, brings it back into relief how long ago it is since his time in Scotland. Yeah, his uh, two eldest lads are good footballers as well. Uh, definitely one of them, possibly both of them, are in and around uh, Dundalk and one of them in and around the first team squad there. So, yeah, uh, it's a long time ago now. That was obviously the, very much the high point of his time in Scotland, getting to that Scottish Cup final against Celtic. It all unraveled pretty quickly. It had already unraveled. They'd been relegated by the time the Cup final came along. And then he struggled over the following few months and ended up coming back to the League of Ireland. What a brilliant success story it's been for Stephen Kenny, the way he has been able to rejuvenate 
his career. So he he has been to Hampden Park. He has memories of Hampden Park. And as I say, Saturday night, uh, I think on the back of that Scottish victory, it's going to be, as you would expect, a, a stereotypically raucous atmosphere tomorrow night. Yeah, I remember I was there as a fan. The last time Ireland went to Glasgow, that was Celtic Park, though, the mm. Maloney quick free kick. It was a weird kind of emotion charge around that as well, because naturally there was a kind of a, a very much an Irish element in the city going along to watch Ireland as well, which had a lot of emotion around it. But what felt to me, if, if I recall correctly, after the night that was had afterwards, it was a pretty flat Irish performance that night. I was really poor. And it was probably the goal that was most replayed of the Martin O'Neill era. Martin O'Neill era in charge, one that he, uh, I understand, replayed at many coaching conferences down through the years as well as to what went wrong because I, it was absolutely diabolical defending from Ireland. The short corner kick, nobody comes out. Simple ball into the area and a straightforward victory for Scotland. Uh, of course, ironically, uh, Scotland thought having won in Glasgow and then drawn in Dublin that they would be the ones heading to Euro 2016 and Ireland managed to turn around. Scotland don't qualify. Ireland managed to get there. Uh, so, you know, these things uh, can take on a life of their own. Uh, Scotland have a big chance tomorrow night, though, over the next couple of games. I think most of us would have felt that Ukraine at full strength were probably the best team in this group. Like for Scotland to win, uh, you know, I know people are sick of hearing about what the Nations League means, but you know, they're in League A, they're getting a lot of glamour ties over the next couple of years, they're guaranteed a playoff, all of that sort of stuff. So it's it's a huge game for them. Uh for Ireland, while it's important and I think it is more as much as anything else about just keeping that real positive momentum going. Yeah, it's a dirty work coefficient as well. But from Scotland's perspective, they effectively got to a Euros thanks to the previous Nations League campaign. If they win the group, they'll be guaranteed to be in the second pot of coefficients for the draw coming up as well, which will help their chances of qualifying automatically too. So there's plenty of bonuses in uh, getting into League A for the next time round. Let's hear a bit more from Stephen Kenny then. He was talking about making new memories with this team and also talking about the support the fans are going to bring to Hamden tomorrow night. It's a great occasion. We're delighted to come to Hamden, full house. It's, it's you know, a very special, special game. The players, the both sets of players, I'm sure, are looking forward to it. Um, we treat every game in isolation. Uh, you know, Scotland have had a good win the other night. We respect that. You know, they've played well. And we played well in our last few games. And, you know, I think from, from our point of view, with this Irish team, it's a, it's a new it's a new Ireland, it's a new Irish team, it's a new identity. It's we we brought you know given over sixteen players our international de- debut in eight, eighteen months. You know the style of play is what the Irish public are connecting with in a major way, and I think uh, right throughout the country wherever we go, we're inundated with people who connect with this this team now. The mixture of youth and experience we we've had uh, to. So, you know, we've had to suffer a little bit in terms of some results in the in the rebuilding, but 40 to, 44,000 sold out on Tuesday night against Armenia already. Um, you know, for, for a game on a Tuesday night against Armenia, that's not a, a Euro qualifier, a World Cup qualifier, so that'll give you an indication of the level of support in the team at the moment throughout the country. People are excited by the team, and um, and the crowd have been extremely passionate. You would have felt that if you were in the game. I'm not sure if you're in the game against Scotland in the Aviva. It's a tremendous away support. Now, this will be our biggest away support because since we've come in, we've just had, obviously, COVID issues and not really, you know, we had uh, away fans at some matches, but this will be our biggest away support um, since we've become manager. So it, it's uh, Irish fans travel throughout, throughout the world. And uh, so from that point of view, it's a special game. By the way, nil-nil at Tallis Stadium at the moment in the pretty crucial European playoff for the under-21s. Ireland under-21s nil, Israel nil. Jonathan Higgins will be keeping us uh, up to date on that throughout the show a little bit later on. But Nathan, looking at this Ireland senior team then, lots of selection question marks. And Stephen Kenny hasn't dropped too many hints where he said earlier this week that they'll have to make considerations about former club level and also the body of work of some of those players, which strongly hints the likes of Matt Doherty, Seamus Coleman, Duffy, who haven't played much for their clubs, could still be in contention to play at Hampton. Yeah, a couple of things on that. It was interesting to hear Stephen Kenny describe it as a new Ireland side. And obviously, 
Now, there's still something of a divide in terms of opinion on Stephen Kenny and those who feel that Stephen Kenny uh, is not the man will say, well, he's been in charge for two years. How can we say it's a new Ireland? There's every possibility that Ireland tomorrow night will line up with seven players, 23 and under. Uh, Gavin Bazunu in goal, Darrow O'Shea is 23, Nathan Collins is 21, just six caps for Nathan Collins. In midfield, Jason Knight will play 21, Jason Malumbi. It's between him and Jeff Hendrick, Malumbi 23, a real opportunity for him to start. You've got Troy Parrott at just 20 still. And Michael Obafemi, 22, just four caps. Just, it's still a very inexperienced squad. Now, Stephen Kenny is built on that. He's had to build on that over the last couple of years so that a lot of those guys at least are into double figures. And it feels as though they're established right now. But he's right. It is, I think, to the outside world, still very much a new look Irish team. There was probably a bit of a hint at the press conference tonight. John Egan came out with Stephen Kenny for the press conference. Generally, it is the captain who comes out. Uh, I would definitely suggest that Seamus Coleman won't be starting. Uh, I think if there was any chance that Coleman was starting, he would have been there. I would have expected that Shane Duffy would likely captain the side ahead of John Egan. So that may well suggest that it is going to be Darrow O'Shea who goes in instead of Shane Duffy alongside Nathan Collins and John Egan. So you might well have Egan in the centre, Collins on the right and O'Shea on the left. The pros and cons for Duffy are obviously, as I mentioned earlier, a couple of really bad mistakes when trying to play it out from the back against Scotland, go against them. What goes for him is his experience, but also Scotland scored a couple of their goals on Wednesday night from set pieces, and there's nobody better in this Irish squad at both ends of the pitch when it comes to set pieces uh, than Shane Duffy. I think the the other debates are Hendrick or Malumbi. Malumbi is the man in possession, but Hendrick is back playing, and, and, and Kenny is a big, big fan of Jeff Hendrick, so maybe Hendrick gets the opportunity away from home with that little bit more experience to slot back into the midfield. I know some people feel there's a McLean robbie Brady discussion. I'd be shocked if McLean doesn't start tomorrow night. Me too. And then uh, Jason Knight will play, and I think it's which two out of Troy Paris, Michael Obafemi, who again played so brilliantly and linked up so well together in the 3-0 win against Scotland. Does he go with them again, or is the club form of Shidozi Ogbene, Ogbene with you know, four goals already this season, uh, this time last year, it felt like he was the man for the next three or four years. Does he come back into the side? And I think actually Ogbene probably sums up part of the issue for Stephen Kenny. Mm. When you are playing young players, and every coach will tell you this, like, they're inconsistent. So we keep thinking that this guy is the next guy and they'll have a little bit of dip. Someone will come in, somebody else will come back. So there's a few decisions to be made for Stephen Kenny. But I think at this stage, seven, eight of that starting team are pretty much set in stone. Great stuff, Nathan. Looking forward to the game tomorrow in Glasgow. Thanks a million for joining us. Thanks, Will.